that's not, that's not biblical, but it is biblical to have reverence for it. So the Hebrew consonants are there. So the question is then, how do you pronounce it? Y-H, V-H, or Y-H, that Vav can be W or V. In the Middle Ages, the Hebrew scribes started putting in the vowels because they were afraid that the Jewish people were going to forget how to speak Hebrew. Because in the old days, you didn't need it. You did all the, you just all, no vowels, but you knew the words. But as it went on, so they put in the vowels. The Masoretic text, they started putting in the vowels. So they had to put a vowels into Y-H-V-H. So what do you do? So what they did is they took the vowels from Adonai, A, O, A, without the Y at the end, it's A, O, A, and they put it into Y, H, V, H. And they got Yahovah. And when the Christian scholars of Europe began to study Hebrew, they didn't really understand what had happened. They introduced a European form of it, Jehovah. That's how it got there. Now, but several early Christians, Greek writers, testify of the pronunciation. They said, early on in the first centuries, they said it is Yahweh or Yahweh. And we know that the first syllable is definitely correct because throughout the Bible you see the word Yah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. God's name, Yah. Yahweh. But I don't want to merely look, it's so an, such an awesome subject, but I don't want to merely look at what it, mean, what it says there, how do you say it, but I want to look at what it means. Because that's the key of it. Because it's awesome. Come, it, I mean, it's the, the name of God. You know, it's, again, it's like not the title, it's not the, it's not the description, it's, I mean, so much, it's the name, it's his personal name. Like, Jesus is Lord, he's a human He's, he's God, he's, he's man, he's Lord, but he is Yeshua. That's his name. Your name, this is God's name. It comes from a root in Hebrew. Where do you get Y-H-V-H? It comes from the root, which is Hayah. Try it. Hayah. Now give a karate chop there. Hayah. An ancient Hebrew word, Hayah, or Hawa, or Hava, which simply means to be. Haya means, haya lohoyot, means to be. So what do we learn from this? The name of God, these first four letters, it means, as we said, and the best way to translate it, even though it's in the future tense, a whole that you can't really say I am in Hebrew yet, it gets around it, is I am. I exist. I exist. Wow. The first, the first, that name, that first thing, the first you have I. Starts out with I. That's as personal as it gets. It's saying or automatically God is not some cosmic, may the force be with you. He is not some, I believe, oh, God is some force, some, you know, some, or God is the cosmic all of the universal, mystical, harmonic convergence, you know, thing. That's impersonal. The, the Eastern faiths, don't, they don't really believe, even no matter what they say, they don't believe ultimately in a personal God. It's all impersonal. And many people believe in an impersonal God. I don't know how that, what's that? You know, impersonal God, you know. You pray and you get his machine. I don't know what that is, an impersonal God. You know, they don't believe, you know, that, that, the idea of a force. Yes, he is a force. I mean, you could say he's a force. Love is a force. The spirit is a force. But the first thing about God is, he is and he's infinite, but he is personal. That means the only way to really know him is to know him as personal. And if he's not, when he stops being personal, not only just because we can say the words, yeah, it's personal, it's a relationship, it's not religion, but even we as believers can get away from the eye of it. Getting away from the personal, we talk about God from a distance. God saying, I. I means he has feelings. He has passion. He weeps. He loves. You can't have love without an eye. Because what's loving? I. No other title. What's your name? It's I. Wow. That's his name. His name is I. And his verb, the next part of it is, his last name is M. I am. Wow. I am. What does that mean? You know, people want God for what he can do for them. You know? People praise God, you know, for what you can do. God will work for you. That's not really what the Bible... I mean, God, yes, He condescends to wash our feet, yes. He, is, he does become, out of His grace, our, a servant. But the first thing, you know, people use God. Here's the, faith, here's the formula to get what you want. 
Here's the formula. You know, or I'm looking for signs and wonders. Now God gives signs and wonders, but if you get focused on signs and wonders, you are not focusing on Him. Or on the I am. You are focusing on things. I want the things of God. But I am says, it's not, it is, His name isn't I, I will do for you. Even though He does, but the first thing is, it has nothing to do with what He does. It is I am. That's enough. And so for we, His people... It's not first because of what God can do for you. It's because of who He is. You love because He loves you, but He loves you because He is love. You know, People make God into a system, a formula, in, in different movements. And also, not only that, in dry religion. That's what beca God becomes, like, or in the dry theology. It becomes, God becomes an it, an object. He's never an object, really. He is a person. He is I am. He's the heartbeat of the universe. You know, when you love somebody, when you really love somebody, you don't love them because of what they can do for you. You love them because you love them. You don't need a reason. They are. What he's saying, if we are the people of I am, then we don't, you see, we have the thing backwards. We think we have to do so we can be. If I do good enough, I'm going to be all right. God will love me. If I do, okay, if I do enough, I will be good. If I do good, I am good. No, it doesn't work like that. If I am good, I will do good. And I am good only because He is. We don't do to be holy. We are holy in Him. We become holy in Him, then we do holy. You cannot do Christian works or Messianic works to become a Christian. You can never do it. That's why you need, without God going right into your heart, you can't do it. Without His love going, His love's got to go right in there and then you can do it. You don't try to get God. You don't earn God. God is. God is love, then that's why He loves. We are the I am people. And we used to grew, we, many of us grew up with watching a sailor say, I am what I am. <laughs> That's like the Max Flesher version of Exodus. I am what I am, and that's all that I am. I'm Popeye, the sailor man. <laughs> There's something to it, though. You see, with God, it is. How is he known? By what name? What name shall I say, Lord? Just say, I am. Notice, he is what he is. There's no pretense. There's no errors about God. There's no, it's just a bare reality. I am what I am. I am that I am. And his people have to be I am people, meaning we're real. Because he's real. Therefore, you have to be real. When you try to be something else that you're not, you're not fooling God. You might be fooling others, but you're not fooling God. God cannot deal with phone, with phony saints. He can deal with real sinners and make them real saints. But you got to be real with God. <laughs>